Hey, do you like winning? I love winning. That's why I'm making this Hearthstone Beginner's Guide. So you can win as much as I do. Today, we're talking about playing on curve, which is the most important concept to understand when you need to play which cards. If you just learn about playing on curve, you'll be able to reach legend with the easier to play decks. Playing on curve, now what does that mean? It means using all your mana crystals every turn. Now why is this important? In Hearthstone, you get limited resources. You have 30 health, you have your cards, you have your hero power, and you have your mana crystals. So to have the best chance to win, you need to use your resources as best you can. Every little thing matters. If you end your turn with mana left unspent, you're throwing away resources. You can't get them back. You lost your chance, it's wasted. So before you make a play, always think about the best way to spend your mana crystals this turn, but don't stop there. The next turn, and maybe even the turn after. It's really easy. We're just counting. I'll explain more with some examples and exercises. It's the start of the game. We drew these cards. We need to mulligan, which means replacing the cards. But which cards do we mulligan? Keep the focus on the mana cost. Well, we don't mulligan any card at all. We have a one mana card for turn one. On turn two, we have two mana, so we have a two mana card. And on turn three, we have three mana, so we can play our three mana card. So just like that, you're able to look two turns ahead. Druid has a lot of mana manipulation that you need to understand to play the class well. Here's turn one. How do we play the first three turns? This is how I'd play it. Turn one, innervate. Play Raptor. Turn two, Wild Growth. Turn three, we have four mana now because of Wild Growth. Gnomish Inventor. This is a bit more complicated because we're playing Shaman and Shaman has overload. In fact, every single card in our hand has overload. Which of these cards would you mulligan and which ones do you keep? And how would you play the first three turns? Take a moment to think. Remember, we have a coin as well. So what's my thought process? Well, we have a few options. He has turn one, so he might play a Swashburglar and get a Patches. Neither are good targets for Lightning Bolt. But in general, I'm not too afraid of Rogue in the first few turns. If they don't have the coin at least. So that means I'm probably not going to play Lightning Bolt on turn one or turn two. Instead, Totem Golem. Should be able to deal with anything he plays. If we coin it on turn one, we are overloaded on turn two for one mana. So we'll have one mana left. And you might say, hey, for one mana, I can play Lightning Bolt. But there's nothing to Lightning Bolt. And actually, playing it on turn two will leave us overloaded for one mana on turn three, which means we won't be able to play Feral Spirit. Since we can't play Lightning Bolt on turn two or one, we get rid of it. However, against a different class, you might want to play Lightning Bolt on turn two. In that case, You'd coin Totem Golem on turn 1, play Lightning Bolt on turn 2, but only have 2 mana on turn 3, so you wouldn't be able to play Feral Spirit, which means you get rid of it. And then you also get rid of the second Lightning Bolt in that case. If we're talking about playing on Curve, that's a good play as well, but just not good against Rogue. Now we're at turn three, but do we actually play the Feral Spirit? Why am I asking you this? It's the best play on board and it plays into our mana curve. Well, if we play Feral Spirit now, we're overloaded for two next turn. 
we won't be able to play Flame Wrath Faceless next turn. So in some matchups, I wouldn't have played Feral Spirit. I would have Sir Finlead and Hero Powered, so I would be able to play Faceless next turn. However, we're playing against Rogue. I don't want to have my Faceless sapped, leaving me overloaded without a board. So we do play Feral Spirit. Okay, now I'll show you a real game I played and I'll explain to you how I was thinking about my mana and how to play on curve. These are all too much mana to play early game. So we get rid of all of them. Okay, I have no one mana cards, so we pass. I have no two mana cards, so I hero power. I have one three mana card, so it's an easy choice. The game is pretty straightforward so far. It looks like I might have to play swipe on turn four. But now I drew Arcano Smith, which is a much better play. Turn five, now we have three choices. But swipe leaves us with one mana left unspent, so it's not very good right now. Also, it's not very good on board, and it will be much better later on with spell power. Druid of the Claw is not bad on board. But what we really want to do, here we're thinking ahead a few turns. Next turn we have six mana, so we want to swipe hero power, probably, next turn. To turn after we want to play Ancient of War. And on turn eight we want to play Ragnaros. And Ragnaros is really good if we clear his board, because Ragnaros is really bad against small minions. So if we're going to swipe hero power next turn, we want to set up for it. How do we set up for it? We trade our 3-2 into his imp. So hopefully he'll trade in such a way that the minions on board all have 2 health. And hopefully the Azure Drake we're playing this turn will survive. And then we have a spell power swipe that just clears the board and we win the game from there. Okay, this is perfect for swipe, hero power. 7 mana, we play our biggest minion. 8 mana, but we drew inner bait. So we have a potential of 10 mana. So instead of playing Ragnaros here and playing into Twisting Nether, we can innovate, Feral Rage, Hero Power, kills Emperor, only for 5 mana. We have 5 mana left, we can play the Druid of the Claw, which we still have because we didn't play on turn 5. 5 mana plus 5 mana is 10 mana, and we did 9 damage to his face. Just one warning, be careful of playing Innervate first, because you cannot go over 10 mana. Okay, 8 mana, we can play Ragnaros now. And I was thinking about playing the Living Roots here, but it doesn't help us to extra 1-1s, one they still die to AoE. So instead, I want to just keep the extra card in our hand and might set up lethal for us later. At this point, playing a curve isn't that important anymore. We're more concerned with finding a way of killing him, which we do. Just by keeping in mind the concepts of playing on curve, we only had to make a few choices about which cards to play. Let me know in the comments below which decks you think are the best for playing on curve. That's it for this Hearthstone beginner's guide on playing on curve. Please ask me any questions you have about playing on curve in the comments below. And hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.